In the Mediterranean uplands of southern Spain lies a mountain that is home to a legend. Local people say that hidden in the densest undergrowth lies a terrible creature, five meters long and covered in fur. This fearsome beast travels swiftly and in secret. It's only ever seen in fleeting glimpses. But its home is also home to other master predators. With so many hunters working the same patch, just staying alive is hard work. By day or by night, this is a land where danger is never far away. Whatever your size, it's all too easy for predator to become prey in the blink of an eye. This is the world of the bush demon. Up here in the high country of southern Spain, not much escapes the notice of the large birds of prey. In its search for food, the golden eagle patrols a huge territory. This bird may fly 200 kilometers in the course of a single day. The eyes scan for movement, and experience decides if movement means food. Wild boar are plentiful here and are the favorite game of local human hunters. But the hunter focusing on his target has forgotten that he has ventured into the land of demons. The sound of the shot momentarily breaks up the mongoose formation. The bush demon, like all other creatures, fears man. But man fears the bush demon too. The hunter caught a glimpse of the mongoose train. Undulating through the scrub, it looks just as the legend describes it, like a huge reptile covered in fur. Y cuando he ido por ella, me ha salido una bicha, como que era de aquí por lo menos, hasta aquí. Y, y era... The hunter's sighting will only add to the legend. After all, he knows what he saw. The mongoose is normally a creature of the African or Asian bush. But up in these mountains are Europe's only mongooses. For generations, they have used the strategy of forming a train, both to travel through thick undergrowth and also for defense. Traveling in single file, they give the appearance of a much larger, more ferocious animal. Seen from above, the train looks like some enormous serpent that predators will think twice about attacking. So far, the trick has worked well. The female and her three youngsters roam the hunting grounds safe from this bird of prey. With its acute eyesight and a suitable vantage point, the golden eagle can keep tabs on a large area of bush. For the eagle, everything that moves can be divided into two groups, those that are edible and those that are not.
From a distance, the habitat under the eagle's eye looks uniform, but it isn't. This used to be forest, and once that was felled, the land was shaped by the struggle for light and nutrients. The resulting patchwork of scrub and thorn has created a dense tapestry made up of many hidden worlds, a miniature jungle. With eagles patrolling overhead, occasional clearings in the bush are not places to linger. Moving up from the ground, every level within the tangled thickets has something different to offer in terms of sanctuary and food for animals large and small. This searle bunting has found the perfect place to raise its young, protected by a belt of razor-sharp thorns. Although the adults normally eat grain, they'll feed their chicks on insects, which are here in abundance and very nutritious. If a plump insect presents itself, it's worth taking advantage of when there are young mouths to feed. And safe in its upper story, the bird can still keep an eye on the comings and goings at ground level. Unlike most carnivores, the mongoose will spend up to six hours of each day hunting in a territory that may cover six square kilometers. Driven by hunger, the mother has brought her three cubs to the boar shot by the hunter. She is very cautious though. Moving about singly in the open is risky. They might be recognized for what they are small enough to fall prey to a passing eagle. Seen at close quarters, it is not surprising that the mongoose's unusual looks have added to the creature's mystery. It is one of the most ancient of carnivores. Its distant roots give it a strangely reptilian appearance, enhanced by a large cranium and short legs. Nonetheless, Compact fur and a powerful body are perfect for tunneling through the bush and teeth and claws are sharp enough to deal with whatever it comes across. Carrion is not a normal part of a mongoose's diet, but for the group it's a struggle to find enough food. After almost a year of family life, it'll soon be time for the young to fend for themselves. The youngsters are now almost as big as the mother. They are no longer dependents. They have now become rivals. As the time comes for the young to leave, the female is on heat again. That may well account for the proximity of an old grey male over the past few days. He's a lone tracker about seven years old, a veteran bush demon, and so the first to detect danger. The mother has also seen it. It's time to get undercover. The female golden eagle has chosen to patrol this part of the green labyrinth. For as long as she is up there, the bush dwellers know that under the eagle's shadow, a wrong move could be costly. After a few weeks without the benefit of their mother's hunting skills, the three young bush demons have turned vegetarian. Until they learn to catch more meat, anything edible counts as food, and wild fruits are a welcome source of energy. The 
The novice demons will try to find their own territories, but for the moment, they are sticking together, trusting in the security of their close group. When it comes to catching food, the mongoose has many competitors. As a carnivore, the fox is a better all-round hunter, but in amongst the thorns, the mongoose has the edge. The fox hasn't spotted them, so the best tactic for the youngsters is to lie low. There is prey to be had here though, and the fox's acute hearing has picked it up. Down at ground level, he's detected the patter of tiny feet. Voles are fast movers, but in this case, not fast enough. Hunting in the low bush, the fox has been successful. But he's not the only predator with his eye on this patch of scrub. Unlike the mongoose, in broad daylight, the fox is highly visible here. For the golden eagle, this is the opportunity she has been waiting for, with statuesque patience. Everything is ready. Nine millimeter stiletto sharp claws and a beak of steel. In a few seconds, she has calculated the distance to the target, the angle of attack, and the estimated point of impact. For the fox, survival depends on reaching proper cover. Weighing in at six kilos, and with a wingspan of over two meters, the eagle's size and speed mean that a strike from her talons is usually fatal. At the last moment, the fox has found a patch of cover. Is this a good enough hiding place? Or might safety not lie in a dash for thicker cover? Neither sees the other. The fox must make his choice. Now the eagle has the advantage. She climbs so she can dive down and surprise the fox. claws strangle, and her beak completes the work. Although the fox is a fellow hunter, the eagle is powerful enough to list this predator among its prey. This time the fox has been made to pay the price for being caught out in the open. As the high bush country moves towards night, another world is waking. The creatures are different, but for them too, this is a land full of risk and opportunity. Before the bush grew, this was farming land, crisscrossed with stone walls. 
Now, each stretch of abandoned wall is a kingdom in miniature for many of the smaller creatures which only emerge at night. These shrews are tiny, weighing nine grams or less. Nonetheless, they are expert insect hunters, quite suited to this miniaturized world. They live hard and fast. Their life cycle barely lasts 18 months, so their metabolism works super fast. They literally have no time to lose. Shrews hunt the creatures that seek refuge in the wall at night. The locust is one of them. But it is a formidable enemy, equipped with body armor and almost the same size as the shrew itself. The shrew is hot on the trail. The big insect doesn't have many obvious weak spots. But the shrew shows no hesitation. The leap is effective, but the little hunter sticks at it and won't be put off so easily. They may only measure a few centimeters, but hunter and hunted are well matched. The shrew is taking all the punishment the locust can hand out. The insect's muscles can exert tremendous force, but they tire quickly, whilst warm blood gives the mammal sustained power. Stealthily, it approaches for another attack. With the locust near to exhaustion comes the coup de grace. The shrew immobilizes its prey by severing a leg. Triumphant at last, with pulse racing 800 times a minute, this mini mammal has secured her next meal. The next task is to drag something almost her own weight under cover. All of that effort still only guarantees one meal. The shrew must eat regularly if it is to keep up its body temperature. While she eats, she must also defend her kill against all comers. And even staying put for a shrew is a constant struggle. Secure refuges in the middle of the wall are in high demand and there is a constant round of battles over territory. There are plenty of vacancies lower down the wall, but many of these quarters are too close to the ground, and the holes are too big for safety. These are dangerous neighborhoods. These are the hunting grounds of the weasel. A weasel only measures 20 centimeters from nose to tail. But in this miniature world, it's a pocket lion. Glands in the shrew's flanks produce a smell that repels most animals, but for the weasel, it simply smells of food, and a fresh scent is irresistible. Life in the wall may be short, and the death toll high for some of its inhabitants.
Being further up the food chain means that if the shrews are flourishing, then the weasel will not go hungry. But as always, there are other competitors to be aware of. It's dangerous in the open. The barn owl is also patrolling the length of the wall. And whilst a shrew is a snack, a weasel is a feast. Over the centuries, many aspects of life in this landscape have changed little. In 1100 BC, the Phoenicians mistook the plentiful rabbits they found here for African marmots, and they called this land Ishapanin, marmot country, an expression that in turn the Romans Latinized as Hispania. Now, as then, rabbits are the basis of the Mediterranean ecosystem. The mother mongoose, having shaken off her three offspring, is now hunting alone among the warrens. The unmistakable smell of a rabbit close by is exciting her more and more. Paralyzed by fear, the rabbit can only hope that the bush demon has not spotted her. The mother mongoose is confused. There are so many fresh rabbit scents, it's hard to follow one trail. Again and again, she quarters the ground, trying to pick up the strongest scent. The demon has drawn blood, but the rabbit is a strong animal capable of fighting for its life. Predator and prey are well matched. The rabbit has speed, but the demon is a stubborn tracker. Rabbit is the key to the whole food chain on this Mediterranean mountain. The rabbit may take a bit of chasing down, but once caught, it provides plenty of meat for a medium-sized predator like a mongoose. Nearby is another creature that can be food for the mongoose or a competitor for food. The huge horseshoe snake normally hunts these hillsides alone. Now though, it is searching for a mate. It has seen another snake move and follows. If it is another male, there will be a fight. The male's tongue picks up traces of scent and flicks them back into sensor pits. It's a female, and she's receptive. To mate successfully, the male must stimulate the female by rubbing their scales together, and working to join the ends of their bodies. When he judges the moment is right, he grips her hard by the neck to hold her in position while the mating takes place. Out in the open, both snakes are vulnerable to attack, but the female is held fast, so until the mating is over, the urge to reproduce takes precedence over her instinct for survival.
As the land moves into summer, temperatures increase, encouraging other couples to pair off in the secret world of the undergrowth. The female mongoose is still busy hunting, but the male that has been following her for days is still waiting for his chance. She has flushed out a rat, but is having problems finishing it off. In the end, she misses by millimeters. But there's no point in pursuing the rat further. She would use more energy in the hunt than she would gain from eating it. The male sees his chance. Of course, the female knows he's been there for some time. But coming onto the territory of another animal is usually an aggressive act. She needs reassuring that his intentions aren't hostile. By approaching the female slowly, he gains her trust. The mating itself will take place among the bushes, and normally the pair would remain together for a few weeks. These two won't have that luxury. They have caught the eye of an airborne predator. Alarmed by the eagle's shadow, the honeymoon is over, and the mongoose pair must separate. The male loses himself in the heart of his territory, but the female has been located from the air. Flying at the level of the bushes, the eagle can see the branches move as the mongoose runs underneath. She sets her sights on the next clearing. She missed it. For the eagle, these near misses are part of the learning process. Next time, she may not make a mistake. The mongoose and the beginnings of new life inside her have escaped. The next generation of demons has overcome its first hurdle. Up high in the cloud layer, the golden eagle also has young to tend to. So far, she's been so successful at winning prey from her bush territory that she's been able to rear three chicks, an exceptional number where just one is the norm. To do it, she's had to rely on her mate. He has been loyal to her and the chicks, always returning to the nest between hunts. For five weeks, both adults have brought in a steady supply of meat to their heirs. The age difference between largest and smallest is eight days, but it is hardly noticeable. Normally, the firstborn would be the only one to survive, the two youngest dying of hunger. Now, with three large chicks, the eagle pair will have to work the bush harder than ever. The next few weeks are not going to be easy for this family. Although they are not yet ready to leave the nest, the chicks can watch and learn from the constantly changing tapestry of the bush laid out beneath them.
As summer is approaching, prey becomes increasingly scarce. The days have grown long and hot. Before the heat becomes unbearable, the large male mongoose is having a last look around. This horseshoe snake has chosen the wrong place to curl up in the sun. As far as the mongoose is concerned, snake definitely equals food. If the mongoose is famed for one thing, it's the ability to kill snakes. And given the human phobia of snakes, the mongoose's willingness to attack them has certainly added to the legend around this compact but fearless hunter. But a horseshoe snake is still a dangerous adversary. With the contest over, the winner enjoys his victory, unaware that the chase has drawn him into enemy territory. This is the hunter that the mongoose has most to fear. The Spanish lynx is the scarcest feline in the world, but where it does survive, it will not willingly share its territory with any other predator. If it can, it will exterminate the competition, leaving the bodies untouched where they fall. Lynx hardly has a sense of smell. He hunts mainly by sight and sound. He can hear the mongoose, but he hasn't yet picked him out in the shadows. He's straining for contact. At last, the killer's stealth has brought him within striking distance of his target. <laughs> Chance, and the mongoose's incredible reflexes have saved him this time. But if he hunts on the big cat's territory again, he may not be so lucky. All the animals on this mountain must work their territories for food if they are to successfully raise young. The female eagle is now hunting full time. She scans the bush for signs of life. Anything that moves may be a potential prey. The female mongoose is thinner now. She too is a mother again. The babies are safely hidden, but the female has strayed a little too far in search of food. The return trip, with many clearings to cross, is not going to be easy.
Far from the drama, the baby mongooses rest between feeds. They're just a few days old. Their eyes haven't opened yet, and they depend totally on their mother's milk for survival. They are unaware that their next meal may well be delayed forever. Up above, the mother is nearly at the burrow entrance, but so is the eagle. The mother, and so the cubs, have survived by the narrowest of margins. Outside the burrow, the harsh realities of life here mean that for many mammals, life is a series of close calls. For its part, the eagle now knows that this old rabbit burrow is home to the mongoose family. In the privacy of the burrow, the other side of the bush demon's nature is revealed. The ruthless killer is also a devoted mother. And thankfully, she can provide food for her cubs for the next few hours without leaving the safety of her lair. But this peace will not last long. The female knows that without meat, her milk will not last. Sooner or later, she will have to go out and hunt and start to teach her cubs how to survive on their own. But for now, she can rest. While the demon cubs are putting on weight below ground, above, some much needed rain restores the plants and brings a splash of color to the desiccated bush. Over a few short weeks, another transformation has taken place. Down in the burrow, the young mongooses are no longer helpless bundles of fur. Family life is now far more hectic. At four weeks, the youngsters are walking, jumping and sharpening their reflexes with play attacks. Life in the burrow is beginning to feel much more cramped. For the mother, the time has come to introduce her young to the delights and dangers of the outside world. Keeping an eye out for eagles, she gives the duo their first taste of traveling information. They may be a bit wobbly, they may get left behind at the corners, but they've made a start. Now they can begin to explore their territory and learn the techniques they will need to find food and stay clear of the many dangers. As well as traveling together, the cubs need to learn to hunt together. But doing that means moving through the bush out of formation, a dangerous tactic if there is an eagle nearby. Up on the cliff, the mother eagle has successfully introduced her young to the world beyond the confines of the nest.
Out on their own, the youngsters, now flying perfectly, have embarked on a lifetime of hunting. But they have yet to learn the skills to grapple with the bush demons. Above the bush, the storm clouds are rolling in and the air itself begins to feel charged. The mongoose family can sense this change. They abandon their training and head for cover. At the end of summer, the storms bring rain and some respite from the heat. For all the inhabitants of the bush, a surfeit of water is welcome after the lack of it. During the downpour, senses are dulled and a kind of ceasefire descends on the bush dwellers. It's a time of stillness and peace while all around the harsh landscape replenishes itself. When the sun sets, the stone wall becomes alive each night as usual. But the high temperatures have filled it with new tenants. Geckos can harvest moisture from the lichen, and with all the nooks and crannies, there's no shortage of insects to feed on. The newcomers have different solutions to the old problems of survival and change. As hunters, they depend on agility and eyesight. And not having eyelids is not a problem at all. If they have to go somewhere, they take the shortest route. Growing, though, is a different matter. These reptiles deal with changing size by shedding their skins. But as with more orthodox creatures, the transition can still prove awkward. The original inhabitants of the wall, the shrew community, are still in residence, their lives no less stressful. Now the population has swelled and the young have to fight to determine who will have rights to which piece of wall. To intimidate one another, shrews emit ultrasonic squeaks, but these signals can also be picked up by nearby predators. The longer the fight goes on, the more chance the owl has of locating them. The loser is forced further down the wall into reptile territory. But he's not welcome here either. By now, the owl has had plenty of time to pinpoint his target. The whole of the owl's face is like a huge aerial, collecting and focusing sounds until the bird can be sure of its prey's position.
the owls show no mercy to curfew breakers. But for every shrew that's caught, there are plenty more to take its place. The shrew's strategy is to exist in large numbers, and for their part, the owls take care of the excess. As the morning mist lifts over their bush kingdom, another cycle is nearly complete. The mongoose family's time together as a unit is drawing to a close, but they have yet to hunt together. The youngsters are nearly full grown, and soon they too will have to manage out here as best they can. The mother is guiding her young, casting around for a scent. Suddenly they hit the fresh scent of a rabbit. The family separates. Now they will have to put to the test what they've learned in the last few weeks. They spread out to cover as much ground as possible. They know the source of the scent must be very close. The rabbit stays frozen to the spot, pinning everything on its camouflage. Now they are so close that the rabbit can smell them. Suddenly they split up again and the rabbit is disorientated. He's been located and Mongoose strategy will take care of the rest. One of the trio draws his attention, allowing the others to move in from behind. This coordinated hunting is poorly understood, but the results are incredible. Mongoose teamwork is highly effective, and the victim finds all his escape routes blocked. With her cubs engaged in killing, the mother slips away, surrendering the meal to the pair of them. Brother and sister are now on their own. Unwittingly, they face an awful truth. They lack the experience to know that staying out in the open and drawing this much attention may prove fatal. But in order to learn that lesson, they may have to pay a terrible price. In the end, it is the young female that senses that something is not quite right. The young male can think only of the rabbit. He ignores his sister as she moves away. He doesn't look at the sky. The young female has seen her sibling die. She now knows what happens when death drops out of the sky. For the rest of her life, she will always keep one eye on the heavens. The kingdom of the bush demon is an unforgiving land. Under the patchwork of leaf and thorn, the surviving mongoose will meet many dangers and many competitors. As always, 
The skills to survive here will have to be learnt quickly and well so that the next generation can play its part to ensure that the legend of the bush demon never dies.